Mark Andre Leclerc was born on October 10, 1992, in the Canadian province of British Columbia. At the age of eight, he stumbled upon a book titled A Quest for Adventure by Chris Bonington, a mountaineering legend. This book would forever change the course of his life. The book sparked an interest in mountaineering and rock climbing in the young Marc Andre and ignited a fiery passion and a deep yearning for adventure within him. The following year, at the age of nine, he tried rock climbing for the first time in a local mall and became absolutely addicted to the activity. Marc Andre's parents recognized his adventurous nature, and they were very supportive. He was homeschooled until high school to help him explore outside in the wilderness. He began climbing outdoors during his teenage years and frequently made free solo sense of outdoor routes with reasonable ease. The Leclerc family moved to Agassi, British Columbia near the Cascade Range in 2005 when he was 13 years old and a young Marc Andre decided to train himself in the basics of mountaineering while still in high school. In 2009, Marc would graduate from high school and take advantage of the chance to solo the north face of the nearby 6903 foot team peak. After completing the climb, he would then immediately depart for Squamish, British Columbia, a hotspot for rock climbing. Marc was not particularly enthusiastic about his schoolwork because he had ADHD and would frequently struggle against the self-described squirrel brain that came along with it. Due to his extremely skilled and impressive climbing skills, he was that the fact that he was young and on his own, Marc Andre quickly integrated in the community in Squamish. He also quickly became involved in the area's party scene, but Marc soon realized that if he was a man with natural tendency towards the extreme, he described his drug use at the time as such. If most people wanted to take like one tab of acid, I'd want to take like six. When the weather turned cold in the winter, he would also frequently the nearby large ice falls to free solo climb and hone his ice climbing skills with high stakes competitions. He also continued to make astounding feats look like easy work and would really start to garner attention in the community. After he broke Alex Handel's free solo speed record on the 1000 foot 511A Grand Wall in British Columbia by finishing the climb in just 57 minutes, Mark was by nature an adventure loving climber who would complete his ascents with little prior experience or knowledge of the route. It made its already impressive free solo climbs even more impressive and would continue to climb in this way throughout his career in 2013 at the age of 20. Mark would leave the Squamish party scene after he met Brett Harrington, a woman who was also skilled and dedicated a climber and who understood his risk-taking nature. The couple would find themselves living in a tent in the wilderness in Squamish, climbing full-time while surviving on small amounts of sporadically. When he free solo climbed four different routes on the navigator wall for a total of 12 hours in one day, he effectively spent the entire day free solo rock climbing in 2014. Mark made headlines once more in the climbing community. That winter, he would then once again ascent the navigator wall in the winter, which was rated at a difficulty of M7R. This wintertime ascent of the navigator wall was truly a testament to Mark's special ability to switch from climbing with his hands to climbing with his ice axes. He was incredibly skilled at dry tooling, which is the act of using ice axes on bare rock. Even experienced ice climbers would be in awe of his flawless movements. Perhaps as a result, he decided to put these abilities to the test in 2015 when he traveled to Patagonia to solo climb one of the world's most infamously challenging and intimidating mountains, Cerro Torre, a powerful rime ice mushroom at the top of the scary and ragged 10, 262-foot high vertical pillars of rock and ice that protrudes from the surrounding terrain, is Cerro Torre. It's regarded as one of the hardest mountains in the world to successfully climb. Summit climbers must have significant mixed rock and ice climbing experience if they intend to reach the top of its highly inclined slopes. The tough course crew path, which had never been successfully soloed before, would be used for the ascent of the summit mark. Shockingly, the climb would be achieved in just one day. After this historic ascent of Cerro Torre, there was no longer any question about the 22-year-old Mark extraordinary Andre's abilities in the climbing and mountaineering community. This incredible climb would also earn him several sponsorships, but the rather reclusive and introverted Marc Andre was not keen on being filmed. While he made his first ascents of various routes and would frequently go off-grid for long stretches of time, forcing many of his sponsors to drop him, Marc would go on to complete a number of other impressive solo climbs throughout the remainder of 2015. In March 2016, he would once more shock the climbing community by becoming the first person ever to solo the 7,200-foot infinite patience route on Mount Robson's Emperor Head Wall. Later in 2016, he would also complete a number of other impressive solo climbs. He would start preparing for a second trip to Patagonia where he would attempt the most challenging climb of his career to date, the first ever winter solo ascent of the 8,809 foot tall Torre Edgar, which is actually the second highest peak in the Torre group after Cerro Torre despite its lower elevation. After waiting for a suitable weather window to make the ascent, Torre Edgar is thought to be a more challenging ascent than Cerro Torre overall. This additional difficulty would also be exacerbated by the abrasive and unpredictable Patagonian winter weather. Leclerc would spend three days climbing the peak before deciding to camp just below the Rhymeis Mushroom on the mountains' peak. 
However, he slept on the third night, a storm rolled in, and he was forced to descend. Later, he claimed that th his worst nightmare mountaineering scenario was being trapped on Tori Edgar in a storm near the top. Ironically, he then found himself in that very situation the day after descending. Mark was disappointed by his failure to make it. Once the weather window did open up for a period of about 24 hours, he decided to take advantage of it and try to climb in one day since he was already familiar with the route. Mark would set out on a second attempt at calling Tori Edgar without a sleeping bag or other BV equipment and without a device to contact anyone for help in case of an emergency, the latter being a sextant. Mark andre would succeed in this historic climb despite the enormous odds against him by using the east pillar to ascend. By doing so, he became the first person to solo Tori Edgar in the winter and the first person to solo all of the peaks in the Torre group. In 2017, Mark continued to add his remarkable solo climbs of challenging routes to his resume because he was never one to rest on his laurels for very long. Always adventurous, Mark was always keen to conquer these challenging climbs. Early in 2018, Mark would go to Alaska with his climbing buddy for the journey, Ryan Johnson. On March 4th, 2018, the duo began their ascent of the main tower and made good progress throughout the day. They would then spend the night on the mountain that day before making an attempt at the summit the following day. The duo had their sights set on the Mendenhall Towers and would attempt to complete on ascent of the unclimbed north face of the 6910 foot main tower. On March 5th around noon, the two made it to the summit after a successful ascent. When they realized they had cell service, they checked their phones. Mark andre sent his mom and his girlfriend Brett a text message with a picture of the summit and Ryan recorded a brief video and sent it to his girlfriend. Then the two started to descend the mountain, but sadly, it was the last time anyone would ever do so. Concerned after the couple failed to contact Brett for longer than they anticipated, Brett's girlfriend in Alaska contacted local authorities to launch a search for the missing duo. A rescue squad was promptly started to batter the mountain prevented on aerial search and prevented the search party's members from finding any traces of the pair on foot. The situation remained largely unchanged for the next four days as the storm cell continued to batter Mendenhall Towers. The rescue teams were able to spot a large avalanche field and a section of rope from the duo hanging in a crevice on the glacier five days after the men went missing, which suggested that the men were swept away by an avalanche and their bodies were pushed into the glacier. In the wake of the tragedy, a memorial service for Mark andre was held in Squamish, British Columbia and was attended by hundreds of friends and colleagues. Mark andre Leclerc will be remembered as one of the most talented and accomplished mountaineers of his generation and a true legend of the sport who just so happened to live a relatively brief life of just 25 years. While undoubtedly devastated by the loss of Mark andre his mother and girlfriend understood that Mark truly loved what he did and was okay with the risks involved. In his groundbreaking adventures, he found solace in the fact that he had lived his relatively brief life of just 25 years.